This is David, WA9 on Y. Here we'll kind of review a bit of history about RTL SDR dongles. Here I have four and they have evolved from the original digital video broadcast terrestrial, digital audio broadcast FM that was shipped with an IR remote DVD antenna and by the way, the antenna connector on this is a MCX connector, so that required an adapter to go to typically an F connector or PL259 or an SMA connector or BNC. This came in a plastic case. It also did not have a temperature compensated oscillator. Typically, the oscillator was anywhere from 40 to 50 parts per million. Well, if we had a 1 megahertz, 40 to 50 parts per million, well, let's just pick 50, it would be 50 hertz. If we go to 100 megahertz, we'd be talking about 100 times 50, and that'd be 5kc that would be off. And this would be significant and required temperature, I'm um, not temperature, but frequency adjustment in the software. Well, over time, it was wasteful to ship a IR remote and the DVD. So companies like New Electronic, New Electric, uh, repackaged it. You can see that uh, all the difference is a label change and you didn't get the IR or the um, DVD. Also, they put the tuner chip R820T. During the early days of these devices, there was another tuner chip called the E4000. And there were differences in capability between the E4000 and the R820T. Unfortunately, the E4000 went out of production. You still may find some products uh, with it in, but it is not in production anymore. And then several, several years later, the evolution was is that instead of a plastic case, we now have metal cases. Instead of the MCX connectors, we have SMA connectors. And very importantly, these two units have a temperature compensated oscillator, commonly referred to as TXO. They typically have one or less part per million. That would mean that one megahertz is one hertz for one part per million. But when you go up to 100 megahertz, like the FM band, we'd be talking 100 hertz or less in uh, frequency uh, uh, accuracy. All these devices here basically start out around 24 megahertz and go up to 1.7 gigahertz. And that's the reason is as they all have the same tuner chip in it. The back end is the RTL chip. The RTL chip is what takes the output of the tuner chip, like the R820T, and does quadrature demodulation and handles the USB streaming of data. What somebody figured out in way back when is that they could put the RTL chip into a debug mode, and that debug mode would stream IQ data directly out of the USB interface. So we'd have two numbers, there would be 8-bit numbers, and those come out at the sample rate, and that sample rate would range anywhere from 500 kilohertz to about 2.4 megahertz, even though they could go up to 3 megahertz but the interfaces and the throughput really didn't work that well. But you can be fairly confident that 2.4 megahertz sample rate, you would get two numbers, 8-bit numbers, streaming out of the USB interface of the RTL chip. And that caused the explosion of software-defined radio. These devices here were anywhere from $10 to $20. These devices started around $20 and went up to $30 depending upon the antenna accessories and connectors that came with them. 
and this would it basically created the whole exciting realm of software defined radio at an extremely low cost based on commercial production product in Europe that was for video digital broadcast and FM. This is David, WA901Y, 73 and QRT.